For the next few weeks, we're going to be studying a topic called number theory, which is all about how numbers break down and what you can tell about them. And it's actually one of my favorites. Now, you've already studied quite a bit of this, and we don't want to take too much time um, in review. So this is an overarching review of things I'm pretty sure you already know, beginning with some definitions. A prime number has exactly two factors, and those two factors are itself and one. Which makes sense. The first prime number is two, then there's three, then there's five, then there's seven, and you should be familiar with all those, at least the ones that are, uh, that come up frequently, you know, in prime factorization and whatnot. A composite number, by contrast, has more than two factors. So it's divisible by something more than just itself and one. And here's a nice little fact. Any number with an odd number of factors is always going to be a perfect square. Because if something doesn't have a factor partner, that means it must be itself. For example, let's look at, I don't know, 36. 36, we have 1 and 36. I'm going to run out of room. 2 and 18. 3 and 12. 4 and 9. But when I get to 6, it's 6 and 6, so I don't count it twice. That means it's going to have an odd number of factors. Another thing we can determine from these two ideas is that 1 is neither prime nor composite. I'm going to fit that on the screen even though there's a little bit of room. Is neither prime nor composite. So that lays the groundwork of the idea of prime numbers and composite numbers. Now, something you know is factor. And honestly, I think the definitions of factor and multiple are not really helpful. They are related, and you most of all need to know the difference. So let's just take an example. If I say 3 times 4 is 12, then 3 and 4 are factors of 12. Also, though, 12 is a multiple of both 3 and 4. So, factors are numbers that go into another number. A multiple, and this is one way you can think about, is what you get when you multiply numbers. So, for example, the first three positive multiples of, hey, multiples of 6 would start with 6, and then we'd have 12, and then we'd have 18. So please know the difference between factors and multiples is to be able to look at numbers and tell what goes into them. So I'm going to do some basic divisibility rules. And then I'm going to show you how you can use something about prime factors and how you can do that. So the most important ones that you absolutely need to know is you can tell if a number is divisible by 3 if it is even. 2 if it's even, sorry. 3 if the sum of the digits is divisible by 3. For example, I don't know, let's say 2, 16. 2 plus 1 plus 6 is 9. 9 is divisible by 3, so 216 is divisible by 3. This one isn't as important, but can help in big numbers. If the last two digits are divisible by 4, 
For example, again, let's take 216. 216. The number 16 is divisible by 4, therefore 216 is divisible by 4. This one you absolutely need to know. 5 ends in 0 or 5. 6, well, if you know it's divisible by 2 and it's divisible by 3, then it's divisible by 6. So you use two of those rules, divisible by 3 and even. 7, I can show you in class. 8 is, again, sort of more not worth it. 9 is another one where if the sum of the digits is divisible by 9, and 10 ends in 0. Oops, not ings, ends. So it's always helpful, especially when you're breaking down big numbers, to have a good overview of these basic divisibility number, however, by doing what we call the prime factorization. In other words, breaking it all down to their prime factors, factorization. And what I like is for you to do a factor tree, but it's not the only way of doing this. So to do a factor tree, it has branches, which makes it a tree. For example, if we start with the number 60, you can think of any two numbers that multiply to give you 60, and you break them down and you say 6 times 10. And you just keep breaking it down until you have only primes. And so therefore the prime factorization of 60 is 2 times 2 times 3 times 5. That's the expanded form. The exponential, because we're using exponents, would be 2 squared times 3 times 5. Oops. But the first thing we're going to look at, the power of these prime factorization, is that by looking at these primes, I can tell everything that goes into this number. And of course, as you know, we've done much bigger numbers in class. Beginning with 1, we know that 1 goes into every number. So 1 times 60. If 2 is in the prime factors, then it's in there. But we can also see that it ends in an even number. So of course 60 is divisible by 2. And everybody knows that it's 2 times 30. But in case you didn't, if you look at the rest of these, you take the 2 out, you have 2 times 3, which is 6 times 5, which is 30. So we can do that over and over again. I'm going to do the 2 times 2 times 3 times 5 all over again. 2 times 2 times 3 times 5. Okay, so does 3 go in? Yes, because number 1, the sum of the digits, 6 plus 0 equals 6, and 6 is divisible by 3, so 60 is. But also we can see there's a 3 in the prime factorization. So 3 times the rest, 4, 2 times 2 is 4, times 5 is 20. Does 4 go in? Well, now it's not a prime. But we all know that 2 times 2 is 4. So when I see that 2 times 2, I know that 4 goes in. And it's 4 times everything that's left, which is, in this case, 15. Okay, I'm going to erase again, because I like to be able to look at this. I've got 2 times 2 times 3 times 5. So now I can see that 5 goes in, because here it is, right in the prime factorization, and the rest of these numbers multiply to 12. Oops, we're out of room, so I'm going to just drag a little more t. We can see that 6 goes in, and also we know that it 5 goes in because it ends in 0. We can see that 6 goes in because there's a 2 and a 3 here. Also, this is an even number that's divisible by 3, and it's 6 times 10. 7 doesn't go in because it would need a 7 in the prime factorization. 8 doesn't go in 
because 8 is 2 times 2 times 2, and we only have two twos. This is 4, but not 8. 9 doesn't go in because we need two threes. 10 does go in, and since we're at 10 here, we can see the 2 and the 5, plus it ends in 0. We know that we now have all the factors. In order, they are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 10, 12, Yikes, I'm out of room. Uh, 15, 20, 30, and 60. So that's how you use, that's first of all how you do a factor tree. And it's also how you use it to find all of the factors of a number. Just by the way, if, in, if I instead like to start out and say 60 is 5 times 12, and 12 is 2 times 6, which is 2 times 3. Notice I get the same thing. doesn't matter what I start with, as long as I keep breaking town until I have all primes. Okie dokie, that's all for the big review of number theory.